My name's Paul Jeffries. I am the Director of Community Development for New York City Football Club. And in a sense, I oversee the community work. And there's two pieces to that. There's one is um, uh, the club-driven work that we do in terms of uh, working with a um, number of charities and giving kids access to the game, professional game. And the second one, which is the real heart and body of our community work, which is a foundation sitting in the community, which is a 501c3 charity. And uh, what I plan to do for this presentation is to give you information on the number of programs that we're delivering, some of the social issues that we're focused on addressing. Um, secondly is why this is important to us and why we think it's important for the larger community to get, get involved and, and how they can get involved, whether it be fundraising, volunteering, or maybe have different ideas. I would also love you uh, to give us some feedback and input on what we're currently doing and maybe you have some ideas on what we could be doing in the future. We're here for the long run. This is, um, we are so focused on having a meaningful social impact um, that everything we look and, and deliver has a, has a long-term view um, to make the change that we want to see happen in the communities for young people. So, so although the club has been around since 2015, the actual community work um, has started much earlier um, under um, when Manchester City Football Club were on tour in 2010. Um, they wanted to do a give back and it was true to their DNA. The, the club was actually founded in 1880 by two church wardens that were trying to address um, issues around crime and unemployment and alcoholism. So football and soccer then was used as a tool for social development. And so when they came on tour in 2017, they wanted to address a community need. And here in New York City, there's such a lack of safe spaces for young people to play, as well as having accessible programs that are free and inclusive. So in 2010, um, that with the partnership with the UAE Embassy, who um, are very supportive of our initiatives, we um, constructed a rooftop soccer pitch um, in East Harlem for a public school. It's also where New York City Football Club was launched. And, and just to give you a sense of when I said earlier about the long-term commitment, we've been delivering programs there for, um, I want to say, uh, up to the present, and continue to do in-school and after-school programs. But We've also measured the impact. This school is the only school in the Department of Education that has received platinum for health and wellness three years in a row. So we've seen the need. Um, we've have to, we think we have a solution to address one of the problems around health and nutrition. And we're now under the new nonprofit with City in the Community is working with partners to try and scale this work. So we, we've got something that we think is working. We've seen addressing a community need. And now we're just trying to see how we could scale that impact. And so. Here's some of the um, key issues that we're looking at. One is to create safe spaces for young people to play. And you'll learn about some of the partnerships we have. And we have already built three pitches. Um, the rooftop pitch I mentioned, there's a, um, a field in, in the Bronx. You'll hear from Fausto, a local community uh, leader, who will, be, will talk more about that initiative. And then there's also a field in Brooklyn. Um, we have a partnership with the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, which is addressing um, um, crime and education. And then we have um, uh, after-school programs that are focused on, um, one, getting kids active, but also um, providing some nutrition education information, both for the children and for their parents. And then this all couldn't happen if we weren't effective in collaborating with local um, community partners that are doing uh, fantastic work and have uh, the knowledge and expertise that we don't necessarily um, possess. Our schools program, I'm going to call out uh, Nathaniel Pacoe, is my colleague who oversees all of our um, our schools programs. He's going to say a few words about some of those initiatives. So, Nat, do you want to come out? Yeah, we work in. Yes. Um, yeah, as Paul said, thank you so much, Paul. Um, we've not seen Paul in a while, so it's good <laughs> to see him back. Um, but um, my name is Nat, and I oversee all our programs that we have in the uh, city and the community and also with the NYCFC. And uh, just as Paul said, I'll just stay on the side so we can see, um, one of the programs that I oversee mostly is our schools program. So um, one thing that we usually look at is um, if you pick one kid out of three kids in elementary school here, public elementary school here, um, one of, out of three kids is obese. And this is what we focus our programs on. So we look to make sure that kids are being healthy and then playing the sports that they love. So going into our schools program, that's the notion that we take to go into it. So um, not to wait, waste too much time. So we have 
three major programs that we have in our schools program. So we have an in-school program, we have an after-school program, and we have our recess program. So I will start off with the in-school program that we have. So our in-school program is a program that we go into the schools, we bring our coaches into all the schools that we have, and then we provide soccer for the kids during the school hours. So either whenever the school's PE periods are, they get to play soccer instead of playing other sports, and that's the choice for them to pick, and that's where we work with the schools to make sure that at this period, during this PE period, this class has, has offered to do PE period with soccer, then we give them the soccer. So some of our coaches can stay in the school throughout the whole day, just providing in-school soccer programs uh, for the kids. And then also after school, we provide soccer for the kids in the after school program as well. We have um, some of our you know, teachers here who are very key in our after school program. Omari over there is um, part of um, our after school program in Brooklyn. And what we do is the same thing. We offer soccer after school. And uh, it could be with working with another organization to bring the after school program into the school, or we have our own program that we, you know, we deliver as well. So um, the same thing, we go in there, make sure the kids are active, they have a safe place to play, and at the same time, they're able to you know, learn other things through soccer. Um, and then back to the recess program. So the recess program is, in a sense, part of the in-school program, but this is a case where we bus kids who are in East Harlem closer to Randall's Island over the, over the bridge to come over to Randall's Island and spend two hours during their recess time because we realized that during recess, most of the kids don't do anything in school and that's why we wanted to provide something for them during that two hours. So they come out there from 10 to 12 and then just play soccer, have fun. And uh, we tell our coaches that they're here to play, so let them play. So uh, in the whole two hours, the kids come out, right away they get into playing, you know, they do some fun stuff to warm up and then right away they go into it. Um, also we realized that after the after school program is ended, you can imagine, you go, you go through, let's say you, you go to PS1, you go through your in-school program, you're able to play after school soccer, then what's next? So one very key program that we have is our, is our program that we have beyond the after school program, which is our community clubs. So we have community clubs in key parts of Manhattan where it's very underserved, kids can't really pay money to play, on teams, so we organize this group of kids in these communities to be able to represent as a team, train twice a week, and then go out and play games um, on the weekends just to feel like they're a team. So, you know, they put the gear on, they go out there, and then they, they represent NYCFC or City in the community, and then they play games as well. Um, and then when we have our in school program, our after school program, our community club, and all that in, what do we do for them at the end? So. We have two big events that we have uh, at the end of the school year, which is our, uh, our city school cup, which all the kids look forward to. So throughout the program, when we start, we're looking at the kids to make sure that their characters are great, they're eating healthy, and they're respecting their coaches and teachers. And then you get to be picked to go out there and compete against other schools representing your school. So. Um, a few of the fans have come out to our City Schools Cup. It gets very competitive, emotional, but it's a great program. Um, and then we go out, so we go out there, there's a trophy, and um, everyone is a winner at the end of the day because we make sure that when you're there, you're there to have fun, so continue to have fun. Um, and then when school's over, what's next? We have a summer program as well where we connect with, um, with City Parks Foundation where they picked out 10 sites where just kids can come in and then pop in and play. Um, so we have 10 sites all across the five boroughs, including Staten Island. And um, so kids come in for two hours, twice a week, and then they play, you know, wherever they want to play. They're there to play. Coaches, make sure they play. And then at the end of the summer program, same thing. We have our five borough tournament. Same thing based on your character, your hard work, and your health, how, how healthy you are. We pick about you know, 10 to 15 kids to represent the borough, and then they go out and play in a five borough tournament. And this is the one where our young leaders come in, where they step up to organize this whole program in our, in our summer program. So if you think about it, we make sure the kids are having fun, but we want to make sure we put something into it just to make sure that they're learning something, they're keeping fit, they're doing something that is important to their lives. 
they're doing something that they think will help them in the future. And who knows, maybe this could be the next time you be here. You never know. But the, chance, the fact that you give them the chance to explore themselves, do what they love, and maybe be competitive at some point and be on NYCFC, you never know. But our main goal is to make sure kids are keeping healthy, kids are being active, and then also they have safe spaces to play. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you. Just, just to follow up on what Nat was talking about, there is a, it's, a, it's called the Healthy Hat Trick, which is a workbook that we give to each of the kids in the after school program. And each of the sessions are designed around promoting healthy eating. So it's interactive, it's immersive, um, and it's relating to something that they're passionate about. So we could be very boring, we could talk to kids about health all day, but if it's not connected to something that they have a passion about, um, they might not engage or embrace these good habits. So that's our power. We see football, soccer as the, the tool that really engages them and they follow. And sometimes it is as simple as a young person having a coach, patting them on the back saying, well done today, eat an apple at the, end of the, at the end of the session. And it has impact. And we do measure the impact that we have on these programs with pre and post surveys. And we're seeing that we are effective in making change happen. Um, next program, um, is, uh, is for teenagers. And this came about um, through a conversation with the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. And it's called Saturday Night Lights. It's funded by them. And they recognize that on Fridays and Saturdays uh, are, are times where there's high levels of crime in East Harlem. And so they have some funding that they wanted to try and put into sports, believing that sports is a great way to keep kids off the streets and engaged in some positive activity, been around positive role models, and have a safe environment to play. And it just doesn't exist. So we've created this program um, at two sites, um, at two schools. There's a, a separate girls' site and there's a boys' site, where any kid at any time during those hours can drop in and play. Additionally, we have a social worker and tutors and even our own NYCFC staff that offer uh, mentoring and tutoring. And so we're connecting them into, into pathways uh, to really go deeper and support them in their academics. We help them with college um, applications, we um, um, do needs assessments with the kids and their families and, and find out if there's any problems that we could, um, um, in a sense, um, connect them to other resources. Um, knowing that we are a, a group, an organization, people that are trusted and we can um, play an, you know, an important role in their life where they might be missing that um, um, that uh, mentor. And we have three girls from the program who we'll hear from shortly. But I want to introduce you to Yannick, uh, who is one of the site directors of the program. And he'll talk to you about the girls' site that is um, delivering uh, the programs on Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, like Paul introduced myself, my name is Yannick, and I'm the director of the girls' Uh, program in the set night, Saturday Night Lights. Um, and basically what it is, it's a crime prevention program in partnership with the DA's office to provide a safe uh, environment for kids to play. Uh, we've got a boys and a girls site. I think at the girls site we have about, I want to say, close to 70, 80 girls. And on the boys site they have, I think, plus 120, uh, 130 girls. Uh, boys, sorry, they kept it. Um, it's twice a week on Friday nights and Saturday nights in the times um, from 6 to 9 o'clock where they find that uh, the kids are more susceptible to, to getting into uh, troubling uh, activities. So they offer, we offer this program for them to have something to do. Uh, the idea of this program is not just to give uh, something for the kids to do in their spare time, but to also use their time to be effective. Uh, what we find that on, from the coaching, the soccer side, is that the more structure and the more um, intensity that you actually provide, it gives back a positive uh, environment for the, for the kids, uh, which is somewhat uh, backwards because a lot of people think that kids don't like structure or they don't like the discipline. But I, we actually find that they actually do when it's in an environment that they really enjoy and something that they really want to improve in. Um, so that's the soccer side. And then uh, we also have the academic support. Something that I've been really excited about so what we've started in the past year is that we did a goal, uh, goal setting workshop where we taught uh, the kids how you set a goal for your year, how uh, to set reasonable goals, and also methods in which you can achieve those goals. Now, with those goals that they set, 
Uh, it could be academic support, it could also be uh, socially. Uh, for example, as uh, when you shake someone's hand, look at them with, in the eye. Something uh, very simple that's personal to each player. After that, they get uh, points uh, for reaching each uh, goal or for trying to achieve these goals through different methods. At the end of the year, we then give out prizes for each uh, goal or the amount of points that they have received. And about three weeks ago, we were lucky enough to, for, for the girls that reach a certain uh, point, were able to go see the first team at training and meet some of the players. So that was very, very exciting for us. Through that process, we've, been, we've seen a lot of the girls' grades move up, their attendance at schools uh, improve. Um, on socially, they've made more friends. They've been more connected with uh, internships and uh, different workshops, which has been really, really exciting for us on and off the field. On top of that, uh, soccer-wise, which is kind of my favorite, some of the girls have never played soccer before, but then they come up to me and say, coach, I'm going to go try out for the high school team, and some of them actually made it for the first time. Mm -hmm. So that's really, really a big bonus. I would like to bring on one of our players, or one of the girls that has been uh, in the program for, I think, three years now, and uh, just to talk about the Saturday Night Lights and how it's affected her in the social. So I'd like to call on Catherine. Hi, um, my name is Catherine, and I've attended Saturday Night Lights now for three years. And um, what I have to say about it is that I, I enjoy it. I used to be like very lazy. Um, my mom would usually make me go out, but I didn't have that much friends, so I never went out. And then I went to Saturday Night Lights, and I had like very few friends. And then when I went, I started um, making friends, and I consider them as my second family now. I enjoy going every Friday and Saturday. I actually, um, um, I actually tell my mom to leave early, the, to leave the house early so we could go. And I like to see everyone um, soccer-wise. Um, I've progressed a lot. I was really bad, but now um, I got better. Um, I'm in the, it has helped me. Um, I'm in the high school soccer team, as Yannick mentioned. Um, I thought I wasn't gonna get in. Um, but all the coaches have helped me. They will encourage you to be a better person, be a better player. Um, and they also, um, they're always there for you. Like, if you ever need um, to talk to anyone um, about anything that has happened, they're always there to listen. And yeah. Great. Thank you, Thank you. And believe it or not, we actually don't offer public speaking lessons, so it's just natural. Thank you, brilliant. Um, the, uh, so, uh, thanks for sharing that with you, Catherine. Um, Catherine also comes to our offices um, in Midtown Manhattan, and we have um, some uh, of our office staff that help tutor, help out with their homework, but also give them access and exposure to a professional workplace environment, which is really powerful. We have up to 10 kids that come regularly on Fridays. And it's really a showcase of where the club um, is put all its resources into helping young people in a very, very meaningful way. Just going to touch briefly, Kwame, I, yes, he's here. So, uh, so we have, uh, one of the uh, initiatives is young leaders. And this sort of plays into all of our programs. We really believe in the power of young people to step up and make a difference in their communities if they're given the chance, if they're given the training, if they're given the confidence, and they're given the ownership. Uh, so there's, there's several initiatives. One you may have heard of, which is called Citizens Giving. Uh, can I get a raise of hands if anyone's heard of Citizens Giving, what it is? So this is a fund set up by our Global Foundation, which is um, to identify um, young leaders around the world to design their own football or soccer project to address a local issue in their community. And um, based on the votes of our fans, it determines how much funding is allocated to each of these projects. So it's a way of engaging our fans, creating more awareness around the issues, um, and then giving some meaningful funding and training and expertise 
to um, allow young people to scale their impact. And there's so many brilliant young people out there with brilliant minds, brilliant ideas, but just don't have the resources. So following these projects, we also bring them together to a global youth summit where they can network with each other. Um, we give them upskilling and training, and we have one of those young leaders here today who will talk about their experience. But locally here, we have created a Youth Leadership Council in partnership with the Mayor's Office, and we have a group of 12 young people, young people being the age between 18 or 16 to 24, who meet regularly at our offices, um, and they're coming up with activities um, to address local issues or get in and support the problems that are currently delivered around the, all the five boroughs. So let me introduce you to Kwame, who's going to talk about the Youth Leadership Council and also touch on some of the young leader training that he's been a part of. So, Kwame. Thanks. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so, I'm part of the Youth Council, the Youth Leadership Council, that was actually fun, actually started in um, August 18th, 2016, um, with the funding of the mayor's office. Um, and so, we come together as 18 individuals from different backgrounds, different social um, economic status, you could say. Uh, and we come together and we talk about different issues of social issues. We also talk about uh, what can we do better in our community. Um, and so we come together and we talk about different um, projects that we can offer in New York City um, using soccer as uh, the main source. And then also, with um, going to Manchester. I had an opportunity to go to Manchester um, this year. Um, it was an amazing opportunity and experience. Um, and so what we did over there was, it was 12 countries from five different continents. Uh, and we spoke, about, uh, we spoke about a lot of things. We spoke about how to become better leaders in our communities. And then we also talked about um, how to engage more young people in our communities when we go back. It was uh, a great highlight of my life, I could say. Um, <laughs> just seeing the CFA, that means uh, City Football Academy, uh, and going there and seeing the pitch, the pitches, the different pitches out there. Um, there was a blue pitch. Um, there was the indoor pitch outdoor pitches. It was just like, amazing. It was amazing. Um, if you ever go, that would be like one of the greatest experiences of your lives. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so um, we as a group um, here go to regular, we go regularly to the um, NYCFC offices. And um, I, we are about, we're about to start our second year um, um, this Thursday is going to be our first meeting, um, and we're going to just have fun at the first meeting, just talk about who we are, what's our mission, um, and yeah, that's it. Yeah, great. No, All thank right. you, Paul. Yeah. I'll show the video. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll show the video. So some of the, the events that we put on have been completely organized this year by our Youth Leadership Council. We didn't do a thing, literally. Um, they have been... Um, project management, managing the budget, um, doing the recruitment of the kids, getting the, all the legal paperwork in place, and it's all run and delivered perfectly, in fact, better than it's ever been done before in terms of the Schools Cup that Nat uh, mentioned earlier. Um, last um, program I'm going to talk about, which is, um, as I mentioned to you about the safe spaces to play, we wanted to bring in some partners to try and scale the, uh, the development of, of field space. And so the New York City Soccer Initiative is a public-private partnership with the Mayor's Office as well as with Adidas, the US Soccer Foundation, and Etihad. We're all aligned in trying to bring safe spaces um, uh, for kids. And there's a commitment over five years to build 50 pitches. And later next month, we're going to be um, doing an announcement to, of the first 10 um, that have been completed. So we're very excited about that. We, one of the pitches that was um, procured through the Major League Soccer and the U.S. Soccer Foundation, which was opened up last year, um, I, I'm going to invite Fausto, after I've played a little video for you, who's going to talk about the impact of this field that's had on him, himself, 
but also the community at large. So before we have been talking about what impact we're having directly on kids, but there's a much broader play here um, in how these uh, pitches can help um, with community integration, multiculturalism, and, and community pride. So you'll hear from Fausum. So actually, it was really interesting how I met Paul. Um, it was just, so before like, so the pitch is referred to as like Anchita in Spanish, it means small pitch. Um, and pretty much before um, you guys saw in the video, it used, used to be a, just a playground and we used to have goals um, and it was just spray painted goals in the walls. Um, and that was, it's, it's had a great impact on me um, because I never really had formal coaching, uh, soccer wise. Um, it was either between my little brother getting formal coaching or me getting formal coaching. So my brother, I, cause he's a young guy, I, would, I let him take the coaching. Um, but it was my sanctuary, pretty much what I'm getting to is that um, I just stuck true to the Canchita and play through it and finance my uh, skills by using the walls, um, just making the best out of my resources. Um, and I would never in a million years imagine me presenting in front of you guys and meeting for and being involved here to the FC. Um, but it was just uh, a regular evening uh, during the weekday. I usually play soccer after school. And Paul and um, Con no, what's his name? His Carter. Name. Carter, yeah. Paul and Carter were there just uh, doing some side visit. And I just introduced myself. I just wanted to say thank you. Because this has always been my life dream. Um, I've always, since I was able to get so much from La Canchita, I've been able to, um, I was able to stay away from the streets, stay away from trouble, um, train myself to be in, in the high school, college soccer teams. Um, I just always wanted to make enough money on my own and then be able to give Aganchita and instill, like, just give kids a, um, a safe ground, a sanctuary, because that essentially is what it is. It is sanctuary to me. I, there, I got rid of all my troubles, um, got motivated. Um, so this this event, um, it was really nice, um, just because we was able to bring all the cultures. So there's a lot of uh, West Africans, uh, South and Central Americans. Um, and through the sport of soccer, I feel like it's, it's very empowering because we break all those barriers and stereotypes that might be between um, the different cultures. Um, and I've been, because of soccer, um, I've been exposed to different religions, cultures, um, and I feel it's really empowering and enriching. Um, because as you guys saw, it's, soccer is one language and it unifies uh, countries and kids yeah. in the South Bronx. Um, and it's definitely, I'm currently finishing my last semester at Hunter College, um, doing a major in human bio and sociology. Um, but definitely, like Anchita gave me that, it made me, not just here, but like, it gave me that um, inspiration to keep on going, despite, despite the find odds. Uh, so like, I'm an alumni from PS49, the school where the pitch is at. Um, and soccer, growing up, wasn't really a big thing. It was mostly about basketball and baseball, um, the big American sports. Um, and I was pretty much, the when I was growing up, um, I was just growing up to be a statistic, and I didn't want to fall a part of that. Um, that's why I really pushed myself um, through La Cachita to be something more than just statistic, be, have an impact um, through soccer, and I aspire to hopefully enrich um, many kids' lives in La Cachita. And in La Cachita, my role there is, I'm like a mentor for the kids. I try to instill positivity and inspiration to them, um, by example. Um, and I feel like street soccer is a big component um, and it's a really, I, I, I feel like, so in Brazil, um, they have this thing called Jenga. It's, it's a player that you develop uh, through street soccer, and I feel like that's what Brazilian uh, national team has so much success. They have Jenga, they have that extra flair. Um, and I feel like with street soccer, we could instill that probably in our national um, soccer team, the US national team. But besides that, we could enrich kids' lives and give kids an opportunity to showcase their skills. Um, the, like, kids in the streets have so much to offer, they just need to be given a platform, and I feel like with like Anchita and the whole initiative that we're doing, we definitely give them an opportunity. I just want to say thank you, and it's been my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Cheers. So, there are a big, to try and find more Faustos across the city, um, as you can see, um, is amazingly powerful and influential to um, making change happen in the, in the communities for the better. So. Um, 
I know we give you a lot of information about the prones. This is just a little snapshot of how this all interconnects with one another. So 5 to 11 is our schools-based programs that speeds into our Saturday Night Lights for teenagers. And then this youth leadership development. But this, this piece here connects into all different pathways, whether it be college, employment. We've hired some people from the prones to become coaches. But this is the, the real platform for them to um, uh, take their careers and, and lives into a different direction. So I think that is, that's everything. These are just a list of the partners that we work with. It's a lot. We can't do this alone. We need people who share um, the same values and, and mission. And um, this is where I'd open it up to you um, to say and invite you to, if you have any questions about the programs we're doing, or if you've got ideas about how we could further expand our work or um, how you might want to get involved. So, um, I open it up to, uh, to any questions you have for any of our young leaders or our coaches or yourself. So, yep. Hi, uh, I'm Tay, NYU grad student, sports business. And I'm just curious about more about how did you get to the position you have right now? How did you have developed it? And your passion in building a great community in soccer? I'm just curious. Okay, so the question is about me. <laughs> which I really didn't want it to be about. But no, um, but how I got to where I am is, and I won't, I'll save you the long story, but I did used to be a stockbroker. I will say that when I was young, for six months. And I realized that I wanted to use my life to helping others that, that needed the help. And I returned to my passion, which was football. Um, but I just got involved. I just started to do it, and I was curious. I wanted to learn about how to be a coach. I was a coach for 15 years. And I was very committed and was very pure about it. And I managed, like in all life, and as I say here, we all need mentors. We all need other people to help us get along the way. And I had a lot of great people in my life. Um, but in my course, of, I was do volunteering doing community work in Chinatown. And I was a Manchester City fan. And I reached out to learn about how they did their work. And from that, um, asking for help is important um, and being true with your intentions about what you want to do and being very focused and committed to it. It's not easy and I think those, those are the ingredients. Um, when people saw that I was very committed to this work and I had other people around me that were also committed to it, um, and then you build up credibility. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> I say, I don't think it's about me where I am. It's, it was, it's more just, I think there's, when you identify a need and you have some part of the solution, um, uh, that, that's also important. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. But I do have, I mean, I guess as a follow-up, I don't want to take too much time from everyone else, but um, I'm a student leader as well in the Sports Business Society. I think one challenge was people don't get exposed to this opportunity of seeing how, you know, obesity or, you know, they don't have this great opportunity to witness it mm -hmm. you know, for themselves. But once they're exposed, they jump right on. And so with NYU and with uh, NYCFC, I'm just curious about how yep. the two communities can actually link together. Maybe that's you. So I will share, this is, could be you, and I'd love to t follow up with this. So we do have, on the Youth Leadership Council, one of the chairs of the Youth Leadership goes to NYU. He actually came through our Saturday Night Lights program, and he's the president of the Hispanic Engineering Society. And he has organized NYU, his classmates, and people in, in his club, to be volunteer tutors for the kids at the Brooklyn Field. And he just made it happen. He came up with a proposal for us. He, it's all volunteer. There's no funding required. It was just more connecting and sharing resources. But if you've got an idea, I love the idea of, of, of talking more with you about that. Yeah. And I, I do feel that once you get involved and exposed to, it's one thing listen to a PowerPoint presentation, or listen to someone talk about their problems. When you go and meet the young people and you feel it and you, you hear, listen to them, um, you, wanna, you can't help but not help. And so I would maybe first encourage you to come and meet some of the young people. Anything else? Uh, any other questions? So uh, I do want to close this and say um, uh, thank
thanks for attending. Um, I hope it, you learned a little bit more about work. Hopefully we didn't confuse you with it. Um, and I do have a survey for you to complete. I'd love to get your um, feedback on how you might want to get involved. Or um, there's a comment section, so feel free to write anything that you want. Um, but I'd love to follow up with you if, if there's any interest in helping support. I'll, oh, I should say, Tuesday we're going to have our first fundraising event with Patrick Vieira and David Villa. And it's a benefit. And what, Claudio Reynaud, who's on the board of the foundation, along with John Patrick, of our president, will be there. Um, if you are interested in attending, we can send you out um, an invite. Um, but it'll be this Tuesday, NYCFC House, from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. So, all right. Anything else? Thank you for your time, everyone. Thank you.